Currently the film editor at 92.7 Big FM and a columnist for the Indian Express, America and the Hans, India. Ms. Tiska Chopra has trained with theatre greats like Nasiruddin Shah and Ferozi Abbas Khan. She got a big break with Amir Khan's Tare Zami Par, for which she won several national and international awards. Apart from being a regular on stage, she is also a favourite with advertisers, endorsing brands like Tanishq, Titan Eyewear, Ole, Horlicks and Kellogg's. She is currently starring in the Indian franchise of the hit American series 24, being produced by Anil Kapoor. Ms. Bad Madhuri Banerjee has written five novels, including Scandalous Housewives. She is also the screenplay writer for Hate Story 2, Revelant's Relationship Guru, Maxim's Sex Columnist, and a CNN IBN blogger. Mr. T.P. Rajivan writes in Malayalam and English. In English, he has written Kanaki and a collection of poems, He Who Was Gone, thus. He has also edited an anthology of poems, Third World, post-socialist poetry with Croton poet Lana Derkak. In Malayalam, his published works include three collections of poems in Malayalam, Vathil, The Door, Rashtra Tranantram, Political Strategies, and Kuritra Channalal, The Day. When I was, the day when I was horripilated, in addition to a collection of essays on literary and cultural issues, Athe Akasam and Athe Bhumi, The Same Sky, The Same Earth, and a travelogue, Para Petu Poya Vaku, on the trial of the lost word. He has edited an anthology of world poetry, Virun, Virunu Vana Vaku, The Guest Words. Two of his no, novels are made into Mal Malayalam films, Paleri, Manikayam, and Nacham. Thank you. Welcome to the session. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. In fact, I am a bit confused as to what actually this title means that is from screen to script. And when organizers asked me to moderate the session, I frankly confess that I am, I am asked them if I am qualified to uh, to be a moderator for, for a, on a, this kind of panel because with me are very eminent film personalities from film like uh, Bhavana Somaya, Diska Chopra and uh, Banerjee, Madhuri Banerjee. So my connection with the movie film is very limited. That two of my novels were made into movies. One which won awards for best actor, best actress, direction, like that. And uh, after that some of, uh, some uh, directors and producers are approaching me to write scripts, but I am hesitant. I am not, I'm not that much sure will I uh, take it up. There are many reasons. As an introduction, what I will do is that I will just uh, mention two incidents in, in from Malayalam movie. Because I understand the topic is from screen to a script that involves or suggests the process of filmmaking, what kind of pressures and, and uh, pressures the filmmakers often undergo while making a movie. So the first movie in Malayalam, which is called Vigata Kumaran, in translation, it is The Lost Child. It was made in 1927. And the, that time there were no female actors, fem uh, women actors in Malayalam. So the uh, filmmaker, the producer and director was one, that is Daniel. He looked uh, search, made very good search looking for a actress but nobody was building at last he go to one an actress from a scheduled cast and he made that movie in 1927 but he couldn't screen that movie more only one screening was allowed the first screening was in 1927 was in Tivendram. he invited all the elite people brahmins high caste uh, brahmins all and among them they saw this a uh, scheduled cast uh, girl sitting with them. So it irritated the entire audience. They threatened him to burn the theater. And uh, Daniel stopped screening this movie and he left Kerala and then went to Tamil Nadu. And this girl also, her name is uh, uh, 
Rosi. Rosama was the real name, Rosi. Rosi also was forced to flee the state. She left to Kerala and went somewhere in Tamil Nadu and lived there. After that, nobody knew what happened to her. Now it is, it is heard that she died in 1988 or 99 like that. This is the fate of, uh, of film. So what I'm trying to say is that, unlike there were many, many poems and novels in Malayalam that depicting the stories of downtrodden people scheduled a caste. The books were not burnt. But when it came to making a movie, when a lower caste girl was given a chance to act, the entire society reacted against it. Didn't even allow her to live in the society, forced her to flee the state and to disappear into anonymity, what happened after, the, after, after that. And also the filmmaker also. This is one, one thing which shows that film is, cinema is a collective art, not an individual art. It's a collective art. A filmmaker has to work within different constraints. Constraints of society, political, um, uh, financial, ideological, and uh, as well as, you know, religious constraints. He works within that. The second thing that I want to narrate is, is this, what M.T. Vasudevanayar said recently. M.T. Vasudevanayar's Nirmalya movie was made in uh, 1973. And recently in an interview, M.T. Vasavan Nair, if that movie is made these days, I won't be able to shoot that movie or to uh, screen that movie. Because in that movie, the lead character, was a, he was an oracle in a temple, the oracle who, who devoted his life to serve the deity, the goddess, his entire family, but the entire family, that his life ended in tragedy. His girl was seduced by a priest. His son didn't get a job. Hello. His wife also became a you know, sex worker. This he saw, so he lost faith in the deity. Then what he did was that with the holy sword, he st stuck his forehead and spat on the face of the idol. This very act, in 1973, that was received well by the Malayali, Malayali audience. But if that movie is made today, what will happen? Will anybody allow a movie in which a goddess is pattern? I don't think so. Then there will be some religious sentiments, people, community, society, all these people will react again, somebody will move the court. Somehow, what happens is the, the, the movie will be banned. So this is, I just narrated these two things, the incidents from Malayalam film industry, is just to show that film as we think is not just, you know, entertainment. It is a collective art, it is a cohesive art, which binds people together. It is not an individual alone that views a movie. It is an entire society involved in that, its values. So. Uh, this is my, my, my brief introduction to this thing. After that, among with us are very eminent uh, people from film world in various capacities as journalists, writers, actors. So what I will do that to begin, we'll just hand over, invite Bhavana. Thank you for the introduction, though uh, I was trying to find uh, a thread into our topic for the day, so which I was not able to find, but that's all right. Uh, most of the panel. Did. Question. I think uh, what I'll do is I'll leave uh, it to Madhuri to uh, navigate this discussion because I'm sleepy at the moment. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's it, it's an honor for me to be here among such esteemed panelists, and. Um, um, so I decided to usurp being a moderator and uh, ask all the questions that I had for you know th for this opportunity. So um, I'm an author and uh, I've written five books. Now, as in you have written twelve books, and um, she's an actress, uh, I've one and book. she's written one book. And all of us are—I mean, some of us are authors out here. We—I actually want to know whether any of our books would be taken as film scripts by directors or producers? Or do directors and producers have their own ideas 
and then find, say, script writers to develop them? Um, that's my first question. And my second question is, as, okay, okay, one at sorry. Uh, before I answer this question, I would like to uh, say something about these two young girls' books. Madhuri uh, Banerjee has written Adulterous uh, <laughs> Scandalous Housewives. Uh, the topic is so interesting that I want to immediately start reading and after that start checking if every housewife is uh, scandalous or not. And on my left is Tiska Chopra, who's a fabulous actor on stage, uh, on screen. Uh, she is lovely in every ad that you see her, like a breath of fresh true, air. True. It's because she chooses her assignments very carefully, is not greedy and is not making compromises. That is why uh, she has quality work. She has written a book called Acting Smart. Uh, it's a very intriguing title. Acting Smart, you think, is all about acting. But actually, the book is everything but acting. So it tells you uh, how to groom yourself, how you have to look, how you to get a role. She will tell you more about it. So I will, uh, I think, for instance, if it's, we are talking about Tiska's book, obviously it cannot be made into a film. It cannot be from screen to text. It cannot inspire somebody to make a film on acting smart. But I think it will help others in many other ways. So maybe, uh, Tiska, you can use this as a freewheeling discussion. We don't have to get worried about the title. You say what you want to say. After that, Madhuri what will say. fiction novels? Like, they, I mean, there are a lot of authors here. Yeah. Who, and, um, you know, I mean, can, you, can Tiska you first yeah. finish talking? Then you talk about the fiction author. Yeah. Thank you, Bhavna, for uh, taking control. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, I don't think my book lends itself to uh, being made into a film at all. However, it can be made into a TV series, uh, like an like a, a actor studio type of thing, uh, which would be interesting um, to watch uh, the process that actors get into. Um, to, to come back to your question, uh, I think uh, the, the idea of something being lost in translation, um, I'm currently developing a, a film script with my husband, and uh, we get into the most horrible, horrible fights. We walk right up to the divorce uh, situation, where we're you know, saying that uh, he's, he's sticking to his story like an author is sticking. I mean, he has to be surgically removed from that idea. He's stuck to it because that's his idea. It's he said, that's the story. So I said, what is it, the Bible? You wrote it, right? You thought it, and then that's that. So, you know, and, and so he's saying, no, but you're getting into this, this kind of detail. And rah, rah. that's the actor's perspective. So there, there in, in, right in my house, I can see what happens on, on a macro scale. It's when you take, uh, when somebody's thought of a story from beginning to end, they've thought of it in a certain way in rich textural detail. And then there's somebody else who also likes to think of themselves as being creative, may or may not be true. I'm talking about actors here. Um, so if, if, they, if they are creative, then they will bring something to the table, and it may not go with what the writers originally thought of. It may be better or maybe far worse. But then there's the director, there's the cinematographer. So there's a whole lot of layers that come in. So I think a film writer has to, have, uh, has to be prepared to be uh, raped regularly, his writing. Yes. So a lot of people say... Uh, you know, I've written Hate Story too, but the idea had come from a director. Yeah. So, uh, and then I developed the entire script and screenplay for Hate Story too. But I have pitched my own individual I script ideas to people who say that, no, 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 I have my own ideas. So there are many directors who feel that way. And then there's another entire camp that says, you know, don't go to a director to get your script made, go to an actor or an actress, and if that person endorses you, that person will take the film to a director because actors hold a lot more power than, say, producers and directors do. So if uh, an actress, I mean, says, this is the film I want to make, this is the book I want to make into a film, the producer will automatically say it because that's the, that's the hold that this industry has, the glamour industry. Would you think that's true? It's only partially true. Uh, I would love to believe that the actors have so much power, but actually, eventually, 
the man who puts the money makes the decisions. And um, even the director, like it happens in Hollywood, in the past in Indian films, in Bollywood films, the director had the last word. Whilst in Hollywood, the producer has the last word. But slowly, it's become like that in India, where the producer has the last word, and even the director has to listen. The writer, no matter how much we want to romanticize him or her, and think that he's the one who creates the thought, is in the cinema world, no matter how brilliant the script he has written, it goes through so many stages, phases, of, like Tiska said, being raped creatively, that often the writer cannot even identify or recognize his script. To just make it more personal, uh, I'm writing about cinema for the last 35 years. I have written uh, many, many TV ideas. I have written a screenplay complete with dialogues. And everybody thinks I'm so well connected. Uh, how is it possible that I have not been able to sell my story? Not a crow is interested. And fortunately, because my bread, butter, and jam is not coming from the screenplay, and I'm not pursuing it so uh, passionately, because I'm so busy doing my writing, my radio, and my other things that I do, or my books. Um, I, everybody tells me, move on, write another script. I will never write another script. Because after writing one script, making 25 drafts, going to filmmakers, and everybody saying, isme thodi sensuality dalo. Koi bolta hai, isme ek aur character dalo. How many things am I going to add? So I feel one should not write a screenplay as a writer, I feel. I would much rather give people story ideas. I would much rather just write the dialogues. I would much rather just be in a development uh, uh, committee where I'm giving it a woman voice or a female gaze, making it more sensitive, decorating small scenes. But even those kind of things are not really existing. Every producer has a script committee and uh, uh, they are all old people who are there, who have been going on giving their ideas, and they're all redundant old ideas. They feel threatened by a new person coming in. Also, what happens is, like when we were having coffee, Tiska gave an idea that uh, script, uh, no, screen to script is something like Devdas. Devdas has been made so many times. KL Saigal uh, did Devdas, Dilip Kumar did Devdas, Shahrukh Khan did Devdas. Anurag Kashyap made uh, Dev D, and uh, I'm told Sudhir Mishra is also making uh, a new one. A new one. Um, I can say that uh, Paro and Chandramukhi are deteriorating every time. I can say that they are uh, becoming more contemporary. So it's a matter of perspective. I would not like to be judgmental. But I remember clearly that when Sanjay Leela Bansali was making uh, Dev Das, um, Dilip Kumar had organized a screening of Dev Das, and um, I was at that screening, and Shah Rukh and uh, Madhuri with Sanjay Leela Bansali came for the screening, but left before the title started, because Sanjay said, I don't want to be influenced by Bimal Roy's Dev Das. And if you look at it, actually, I like Shah Rukh's interpretation of Dev Das. It's completely different from um, uh, what Dilip Saab did. So these are a few examples. But what is happening today is the real big films. If you look at a Khan's, the trilogy of Khan's, uh, Salman Khan, Amir Khan, not so much Amir. Amir is still into his uh, creative, uh, idealistic world, which is nice. Uh, but uh, Shah Rukh, Salman, Ritik, uh, before they take off on a film, uh, it is a proposal making thing. Sh Salman has the pressure that if his last film has done 200 crores or 150 crores, then his next film has to do 200 crores. So to make it into a 200 crore, what is the ingredients that we need to put, which is going to uh, attract all of India? So they say, ek or wo chashme ka kuch dalo item, ek or uh, kya hai chikni chameli dalo, uh, ek kuch uh, or naya character. Uh, item number ke liye lekar aao Kareena Kapoor nahi to Kareena Kapoor se bhi behtareen koi so it is definitely taken care of shirt utara tha magar style se utaro do bar shirt utaro villain ka bhi shirt utaro so uh, it is not what they started with uh, before I just give the mic to uh, my uh, speaker on the left what I need to say is that see Amitabh Bachchan was a superstar for the longest time 
and he never chooses films that my film will do 200 or 300 or 100. And if you take the ratio of what the business did in that time, it is more than any of the Khans did. But he did a film with Rishikesh Mukherjee, which brought a new sensibility. He did a film with Manmohan Desai, which was thoroughly entertainment. And he did a film with uh, Prakash Mehra, which was very dramatic and very poignant. And always when the film was over and you saw the film, the thought was, Chalegi? Chalni chahiye, baut mehnat ki hai. Aaj toh ye hai, kitna business karegi? Aur agar do so nahi kiya, toh are, Salman Khan ki uh, image mein toh dent ho jayega. So just see how, how cold-blooded everything is. What do you think, Tiska? <clears throat> I think that uh, harking back to uh, good writing and good literature, is uh, something that is going to uh, keep certain kind of cinema alive. Uh, for example, Three Idiots was based on uh, Chetan's book. Uh, that had a certain cohesiveness because the idea was finished from beginning to end and belonged to one single individual rather than proposal makers. So, you know, it was, uh, it was a vision. There was something to it. Um, uh, films like Great Gatsby, which uh, Leonardo DiCaprio just did, was a Fitzgerald uh, novel. So, um, Train to Pakistan, Khushwan Singh. So, there's, there's always going to be uh, one or two people who are concerned about quality. And those people are going to make uh, films based on great literature. I don't think writers, whether at this lit fest or anywhere else, uh, are, should write thinking that they, they're going to write a novel which will then be filmed. Because then that will dilute the process of their writing. Because then they'll try and write it cinematically, which is a completely different thing. It can be turned into a screenplay at a later point. It may be a filmable book or may not be. But uh, the writers are becoming very ambitious and want to... Uh, never mind. But the writers are becoming very self-conscious about, they feel that they will become Chetan Bhagat only if uh, they write a book, which which a filmmaker be uh, taking it. And uh, I think even Chetan Bhagat had to kind of uh, agree to the creative changes that were made in the film. Sure. So, so what I'm saying is that when you're writing a book, you write a book. Write it, ri write it like a book for, for, for the purpose of how you see it and how you feel you connect with the readers and the kind of story you want to tell, which is coming from your heart. The characters are doing what they want to do. Um, then if somebody feels that they want to translate that into uh, a feature film, uh, then that is another process of making it filmmake. Because in film, in, in writing, you will write everything. You will write everything. And then she picked up the handkerchief and wiped her brow, uh, which was dripping with sweat. Uh, in a film that will then be very, very easily seen. So you don't need to spell it out. A lot of the things will need to be taken away uh, and be, be put into, uh, and it should be filmic, it should be uh, looking nice, visually, uh, you know. Yeah. The colors of the film should, should say if it's a dark scene or a light scene or a romantic scene. So I think it's a completely different process. So from a novel to a screenplay, is, is a, it's a different kind of writing. I'm trying to learn uh, screenplay writing um, by reading a lot of books like uh, Sid Field and uh, uh, Save the Cat is another beautiful book. But it's a completely different craft. It's got beats, it's got moments, it's got different things which need to work as, as a film and audio visual medium. So I think that's a different thing. Um, what is, what, is, what is difficult uh, for, for uh, authors like Chetan you were talking about, I had a chat with him, and he was saying that actually he was prepared. He knew, and he was one of the co-writers, because even he didn't have the bandwidth to write a screenplay. So he actually co-wrote those films with people who are trained screenplay writers, who know that itne point pe interval aana chahiye. we need a toilet song. We need a toilet song. People need to go to the loo at a certain point. So they need a little bit of a breather at this point. At this point, you need to lift it up, drop it down. So those are beats of a film, which one needs to know as a film. And so the writer has to be prepared for that. Yeah. We, we've been talking a lot about um, Bollywood and um, you know how um, Chetan's books are being made into Bollywood films. But I, I still feel that a lot of Bollywood um, producers and directors, as you rightfully said, are not really looking at um, 
writers uh, and fiction novels to be made into films besides Chetan Bhagat because I know a lot of writers and novelists who have gone to directors to pitch their work. Um, and they've written in many different genres, whether it's been a thriller, whether it's been a romance. But um, Sir here will be able to tell us that a lot of South Indian films um, and South Indian directors um, take a lot of novels. So maybe you can tell us about um, how maybe we can pitch our books to, say, South Indian directors. Uh, one minute. But before he answers, I would like to ask you, Madhurita, Madhu, Madhuri, that uh, because you've written Hate Story 2, and uh, you keep writing fiction novels, so now are you psychologically writing books because you want them to be made into films? No, no. And are you disappointed when they don't get? No, no. Uh, I enjoy writing novels. I, uh, the idea is to write a novel and to develop the characters. And I think I can go f much further in a novel than I can in a script. Because in a script you all, or a screenplay, as you rightfully said, you are thinking about beats, you're thinking about maybe production, you're thinking about you know, who the actor would be. And in a novel, uh, I'm first a novelist. Because my debut novel was Losing My Virginity and Other Dumb Ideas. And that sold 40,000 copies. And then I went on to write four more novels in different genres. My next novel is called My Clingy Girlfriend, which is from a male point of view. And that's releasing in January. So I've, I've never thought that this would become a script or a screenplay, even though now Losing My Virginity is going to be made into a television serial. And I am in talks for another film. But um, primarily, I can uh, do two things at the same time. One, write a screenplay that the director wants me to write which is his story idea, or my story idea, and write a novel for my characters, my plot, my climax of what the book should be, is completely different. And I never kind of interchange the two. So if they feel that my novels have strength enough to be made into a film, obviously it, that has a lot. Because this book, I've done it with all my love and intention. But when you're making a movie, you have to see how many crores are going to go into the movie, how much marketing is going to go into the movie, how much publicity we need to go. So it needs to have that much more weight for a producer to believe in it. So. Sir. Yeah, uh, certainly in, in Malayalam and Tamil movies, directors, uh, filmmakers are more now turning to original literary works. In the beginning, earlier also, in 60s and 50s up to 80s, there was a brotherhood between filmmakers and uh, writers. Major works were, in, Ma in Malayalam I can say that most of the important films were based on novels by great writers like uh, Vaikam Mohd Bashir, M.T. Vasavan Nair or, or many, many writers like that. Anyhow, somehow after 80s, globalization if I can say that word, use that word, this link between original literature and film, it broke. And uh, film became purely an industry, a kind of entertainment industry. Uh, when, we, uh, uh, when the panelists here were talking about movies, they were generalizing Indian cinema as uh, Bollywood movie, Hindi movie. But you know, what is happening in regional films? Region, I won't say regional in Malayalam or, or, or Tamil, Telugu, Bengali films. Many new innovations are being made there. Even I think that when we when uh, we talk about Bollywood, even in Marathi or Gujarati films, what is happening there? What kind of innovation experiments are taking place there? We gather these uh, these experiments, innovations, and focus on these mega stars. This uh, this mindset should be changed. Another thing is that I don't think no writer will write anything with a view to make a movie. A fiction writer writes a fiction like just what. Uh, Madhuri said now. It is the director's uh, prerogative or his invention that there is a movie, there is a film in this work. I don't think that Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore wrote a short story to be, to be made into a movie. But Satyatre, the great Satyatre, he could identify the cinema in that. Shakespeare never wrote for, for a movie industry. But a great filmmaker made movie out of Shakespearean plays. What we are lacking is this kind of directors and actors and filmmakers, producers, all are 
we are all after some names, some big names, some popularity names, celebrities. This is what ruin our, this is, a, this is a bane, this is a curse upon our movie. The celebrities, they are killing Indian movie. Instead, look into the regional area. Languages, such things. <laughs> so this is, this is my experience, you know, my, what I think about Indian, Indian cinema. I would say Indian cinema. India, Malayalam is Indian cinema, Canada is Indian cinema, not only Hindi movie, Bollywood movie, all are Indian cinema. Um, I think let's take some questions from the audience. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm Maya Chakravarti, Director of Symbiosis Media Communication Institute. We also teach them films. So, you know, I was just wondering, you're talking about scripts, particularly you, Bhavna, because you've been involved in writing for so long, and the others who write possibly for movies and not otherwise. What do you make of self-indulgent movies, like maybe a Savariya or a Shabd, which I thought was poetry in motion? In fact, Savariya, my 20-year-old niece fell asleep whilst I was up at the edge of my seat and thought it was poetry in motion. What do you talk about such things then where uh, the director says no to scripts? There was no script in place. A very good question. Very good question. Um, but I would not like to be so insensitive and say that it is uh, self-indulgent. Uh, sometimes what happens is uh, a director makes many films. It's not possible to make all of them perfect and super hits. So a uh, director is also a human being. He's an artist. He's going through many phases in life. Uh, he has a vision. Uh, sometimes it translates and we get involved in it. Sometimes it does not translate it gets lost in his own illusions uh, while making the film. Uh, sometimes he's aware of it and he cannot get out of the trap or the maze. And sometimes he's able to help himself and get out of the maze. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, in my uh, review, I had said it's a self-indulgent film, Savarya. But it is poetic also. There is this green of uh, Krishna's uh, peacock feather all the colors are there. So if I don't have to review the film, and if I have to watch the film in retrospect, I will be far more kind to Sanjay Leela Bansali. As far as uh, Shabd is concerned, um, it was a story of a writer. And it was a story of a writer who is uh, looking for a climax for his book. And he is really disturbed. And he wants a very good ending. And he uses his wife uh, to get a good ending. I thought the thought was fabulous. Uh, it was the execution that went wrong. Uh, through the director, through the producer's compulsions, I don't know. But I don't think that Ashwarya Rai failed at all. She was fabulous. And I loved even Sanjay that uh, stroma, because as a writer, I can identify what goes on into your head when you are unable to deliver, because you have to deliver on uh, the deadline. And nobody's willing to listen about what's happening in your life. You have to deliver, you have to deliver, and that's it. Thank you. Yes, Mamta. Yeah, take it and give back. Well, I have this question for uh, both Madhuri and Rajivan. Uh, because uh, both of you have are novelists, you are writers, and your uh, novels have been made into films, right? Uh, no. OK. OK. Uh, let's imagine that people write novels, and it's been made into films. And those who write novels also write scripts, script writing. You are engaged with the script writing, right? So if at all, uh, and I don't know if you are engaged with the script writing or not. Um, so when a novel which you have written is made into a film, the entire process of making it and your engagement with it as a novelist and as a script writer or as a novelist slash script writer as a profession uh, in which you believe, how do you react to the making of film and the entire process? Where are you involved and how do you stay away from the changes that's been made 
and how would you put yourself into the changes that have been made? I I let you know when my novel is made into a film. So, and uh, if I'm involved in the screenplay process, that would be great. But uh, I mean, inshallah. So, but uh, right now, um, none of my novels have been made into a film. I've written a film based on Vikram Bhatt's idea of hate story. I've actually studied filmmaking, and I won a national award for a documentary I've made. So I'm. I work on different mediums at different times, whether it's direction, whether it is writing, whether it's anchoring, whether it is writing a novel, whether it is script writing. So um, they're very compartmentalized for me because I've, I've done a master's in uh, mass communication. So I believe that I should be a master of all mass communications. For Hate Story 2, uh, the... It was changed, but I'm perfectly fine because I understand that it's a director's vision. Uh, every um, Bollywood, every film is a director's vision. So a script writer and a screenplay writer can kind of lay out the entire foundation for the screen for the director. But ultimately, the visual, uh, the mise en scène that the director uh, has, is completely up to him. And uh, well, I'm sorry. In my case, what happened is that once I completed my, my novel and it get published, the rents, my, my responsibility, the rents it. My first novel was also made into a movie and uh, also it, it was made into a play. What are different things? It is, it, it is a uh, raw material for the director, I think so. And we can't interfere beyond certain limits. The only condition is that he, it, he shouldn't violate the ethical essence of the ethical content of the work, or you know, the aesthetic content, both aesthetic and eth ethical. I would say it. I, this is both are very important. Ethical. If in 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 my novel, the uh, there is a woman character who is coming from a downtrodden family who was, who got murdered. I won't allow the director to make to change this girl into a high caste Brahmin. Such kind of ethical alterations, changes, aesthetic changes won't be there. Instead, he can, if a director is free. After all, film is a director's work, director, director's art. The screenplay, everything is a, a material, raw material, some kind of ingredient for him. That is, there ends there. And also, in my case, what I do is that the director also wanted me to write the screenplay for this movie. But I said, no, I won't do it. Because each character, each chapter, each sentence is very important for me. It is vital in my point of view. If I make a screenplay out of this, I will have to make uh, some sacrifices and compromises for that. I have to avoid, kill some characters and some incidents, which I think important. So I will never write screenplay for my novel. But I can write a screenplay as a screenplay itself, not as my novel. This is my, my, my beyond that. Yes, sir. Novel provides a very vast canvas, admittedly as against the play, as against the play. Vishal Bhardwaj is on the verge of making another either on Hamlet. He has already done Macbeth and Othello. How the director or the script writer makes compromises so far as plays are concerned? That's Bhavna. Yes, Gus. Starting out, I think the most important thing is to understand what medium belongs to who. Who is the controlling entity of that medium? So, cinema is the medium of the director. Uh, he is the captain of the ship because he sees in his head how it will start and how it will end and what will be in the middle. Uh, television is the writer's medium. So as you notice in, in uh, the West, uh, particularly Hollywood, there is all the best writers, all the best writing is happening on television, whether it's Game of Thrones or it's uh, uh, Homeland or whatever the biggest series are. They're all the best writers and the biggest money for writers. Every episode earns them millions of dollars is on television. And theater is 
purely an actor's medium. Uh, having acted on stage and done several thousand shows of quite a few plays, every single day that you go out on stage, you know your lines and you are married to the uh, playwright because every line is sacrosanct. You cannot change a word. You can change pauses, you can interpret it another way, you can do it in a different way, but you will have to say what is written and that's the sanctity of theater. You cannot just suddenly start improvising on stage because there is Shakespeare and there are other great people who won the Pulitzers, who won you know, great uh, prizes for their writing. And if you're performing uh, something which is written by uh, great writers, then you cannot change, you can't change Shakespeare. Um, so it is, it is purely an actor's medium. So what Vishal Bhardwaj is doing is uh, taking uh, inspiration from Shakespeare, taking the plot, the idea of the story, the central idea, and juxtaposing it uh, and laying it on an Indian ethos. Whether he chooses central India near Bihar uh, to do um, uh, no, is he, uh, Omkara, uh, and uh, UP Lucknow kind of setting to do Macbeth. So that's his, his call. He's chosen Kashmir for Haider. So that's, that's his, his call, it's his vision, it's what, what it, it feels right to him to do. Um, and, and I think that's wonderful because we get to see, A, it becomes contemporary. So, uh, you know, m my two-year-old daughter may not be interested in learning about Shakespeare from me, but she'll definitely at some point, maybe two or three years down, five years down the line, see Haider and, you know, think Shahid Kapoor's really cute and want to see the movie and understand Shakespeare that way. And I think that's very important. Art must be interpretive. We should not sit upon it uh, like, ke kundli mar ke ke, you know, this, this can't be interpreted. It is, it is a holy cow. It's not. It has to be made contemporary for people of newer generations. And fortunately, cinema with its reach can do that. So I, I think it's great that Vishal Bhargava is doing that. Very well, sir. बोल रहा था ना मैडम वो कनाडा में एक नागर हाउ बोल के सिनेमा गया वो उसका राइटर वो अपोज करे वो नागर हाउ सिनेमा बराबर नहीं बन गया वो केरे हाउ हो गया केरे हाउ हो गया हाँ केरे हाउ हो गया इसलिए वो मेरा जो कुछ भी आइडिया था पूरा तुम स्पॉइल करे बोल के वो ऑब्जेक्शन किए थे ऐसा भी हो सकता है इसलिए उनका थीम्स प्रैक्टिकल में लाने का बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है ना इसलिए उसके बारे में ऐसा होगा नहीं क्योंकि सिनेमा बिजनेस बहुत ही एक्सपेंसिव बात होती है और राइटर के साथ पहले ही बैठ के पूरी बात हो जाती है और आजकल तो मीडिया के साथ भी पूरी बात इंटरव्यूज में समझाई जाती है कि मैं यहाँ से आइडिया ले रहा हूँ मैं ये करने वाला हूँ उसको क्रेडिट दी जाती है इंटरप्रटेशन है अभी आप यहाँ बैठे हो आपके दिमाग में एक बात है मैं आपको देख रही हूँ मेरा इंटरप्रटेशन आपके बारे में बिल्कुल अलग है वो भी सही है आप जो सोच रहे हो वो भी सही है चलो हो गया हो गया अभी नहीं होगा any more questions? I think we'll take two questions. We'll take only last two questions. Uh, can I? OK, I'm uh, uh, giving my input basically as a reader first and a viewer of movies second. Uh, so uh, one thing I found uh, when uh, I see some uh, movies, basically one was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. First, and I think you should address your question. Whom are you addressing your question of um, the four panels? To all the writers. Okay. okay. Uh, so what uh, would happen is when I saw a girl with the dragon tattoo, I saw the film first and then I went back to the book and uh, read it. And of course, the book was better than the movie uh, always. But the thing is, sometimes movies are a little, add a little more to the book uh, than the author had originally intended. For example, I saw Three Idiots and then I went back and read the book and I found the movie better than the book. So um, I was thinking that all the writers, um, when they do uh, novels slash screenplays, they are taking a lot from this new medium of writing 
and uh, incorporating in the books. Uh, is that a thing or uh, no? It's writing a novel is a pure form of art and they don't take from anywhere. Each is a pure form of art. Each has to be a pure form of art. As, as I said, your novel has to be coming from what your ideas are. And then if you're writing a screenplay, then that's a director's vision as Tiska said. And you have to go according to the scenes, the location, the actors, the, the, whether it's a star, whether you need a song. So it's completely different. Each, I mean, you, you can interpret anything the way you want to, but um, you have to write it in its pure format. Any last question? Last question. Hi. Gentlemen there. Okay, fine. We'll have one more. I don't know. One question. Short, quick, two questions, please. Yeah, hi, this is to Bhavna and Tiska. I want to understand if uh, over the period of time has cinema resonated society as much as it should have? Or is society resonating cinema? And, uh, and what about writing then? Is writing and authors able to collectively resonate society as well as cinema does? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Govin. Govin. Good question. Uh, honestly, the way I look at it and I laugh to myself sometimes, uh, that if 500 years down the line some aliens catch our uh, movies, they'll think that women in the Indian subcontinent wore short clothes and danced around water bodies 24-7. That's what films tell, tell us. That you know they're really wearing short clothes, they're dancing all the time and they're next to water bodies. That's, that's the primary takeout of uh, women in cinema at the moment. And that's disgusting. As far as, I'm sorry, I'm sounding like a feminist. I'm not. I'm just a humanist. Not necessarily. I'm a humanist. And that's like 50% of the population. So my sense is that uh, it's not really reflective of society. It is, cinema has become largely an escapist art. Uh, a, because the process of making a film today, uh, getting it out there, making a film has become very cheap. It's become, you can shoot a film on an, on an iPhone. Um, and and it's, it's, it's perfectly viewable anywhere. The only problem is that to get people to see that film is a difficult proposition. So the marketing budgets of films are often bigger than the shooting budget of the film, which is disgusting, which means that you need to be able to, uh, if you're spending, say, 10 crores on a film, you need to have 12 crores. And that's how people sell movies to us. I was talking to a very, very big production house yesterday, and they said, you know, it's a small budget film because we're saving this much money and we're putting it into the marketing, but that is a reality. That's what's happening. Otherwise, people won't see the film. And then that's, that's a whole lot of wasted effort. There's about 200, 300 people as a single unit working 30, 40, 50 days, and then post-production and all of that to get that one and a half hour, 90 minute thing ready. And if nobody sees it, it breaks your heart. So then people have started lowering the quality and say, okay, chalo, ek item song dal do, ek ye dal do, ek wo dal do, wo bhi kar do, ye bhi kar do, so that the film does well. There are very few people like Raju Hirani who keep commercial elements and sensible elements in. Everyone else is kind of selling out and saying, okay, let's make sure somehow the film should sell. Uske baad dekhenge, dusri wali film apne hisab se banayenge. Abhi audience ke hisab se banate. So no, I don't think it's, it's reflective of uh, society at all. I mean like zero. Uh, I feel, I f let, her, let her finish. Let her. I feel it's a question I'm asked at every uh, cinema seminar I go to. That you know, does cinema reflect society? Does society reflect cinema? I often ask this question to filmmakers and writers I interview. And like Govind Nelani says that you know everybody says there's so much violence in my films, but in reality there's so much more violence than what I show in films. I think it's really a chicken and an egg situation, you know. But the point that every time the debate ends on is that we are doing these kind of movies because the audience wants to see it. So blame it on the audience. And when I talk to the audience, they say, this is not the kind of movies we want to see, that the uh, filmmakers are thrusting rubbish kind of movies on us. So I think the audience is like um, a customer going to a sari shop. Uh, you can make it into trousers if you want. 
but I will tell you about a sari. When I go to buy a sari, and the shopkeeper tells me, Madam, what kind of sari you want? I say, I don't know. It is your duty to just show me many, many saris, and out of that, I will pick one sari and say, this is the sari I want. So I think the filmmaker has to go on making all kinds of cinema, and then we will choose and say, Raju Irani cinema is what we like. And it is reflective of society. I think we're done. Thank you. Okay, one, one last. So something very related to what you asked. I'm a writer, I'm a theatre person, and profession-wise, I'm a marketing person as well. So perhaps I can see all the dimensions, and uh, I know this is a very repetitive question, but when I sit down and pen to write, especially for my theatre, I, I own a theatre club here, I'm always in a dilemma that if my work does not get noticed, I'm not sure of the opportunities coming further. So wish to ask you just one question over here, that seeing the cinema which... Uh, 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 directors like Nambia, directors like Anurag Kashyap are pushing to us, or Vishal Bharadwaj have been pushing to us, and in some time, even Rakesh Omprakash Mehra was pushing to us, he started with Ux. So do you think that time is slowly coming and we are open for changes? And as a writer, should be determined that somewhere, somewhere will find, uh, you know, they'll find their space and make, uh, make their presence felt. Just want a suggestion from your side. To, who are you addressing the question? Uh, Any one of you can answer. Okay, so the question you're asking is, should you stick to your vision uh, or should you uh, sell out? Yes. In, in, in short, that's what you're asking, right? Yes. I don't know. I, I, I can only answer from my perspective, and I'm a purist. I will not sell out. Uh, and even if I sell out, I'll make them come to my side. I'll do the role in my way. Even if I do a sex comedy, I'll do it in a way that will make it slightly brighter or smarter. Uh, I don't think selling out is the option. Uh, Dilution in my own intent. Um, there's a very beautiful Japanese word called ichinin. It means uh, the true, purest, last particle of intent in your heart, uh, which basically means that if you can truly, truly, truly stake your life on an idea and believe it and stay with it and not just believe that it's just a notion in your head and it flies by the next day, but something that you can completely believe in, then believe in it. And its time will come and it will happen. Because if you start selling out, then sure, you must keep interests of, of society and uh, elements of humor and wit and whatever else works for you. Uh, after all, you're not making a home video. But do not sell out on the original idea that you have. Uh, if it's a serious, dark film that you want to make, there will be, surely there'll be lesser people, but there will be people to watch what you have to say. If, you are, if you're itching in, that intent, the determination is correct, then surely there will be people who will come around to your point of view. That's, that's my belief. But then don't, don't take that as something that's, uh, it, it's not cast in stone. Everyone's got their own experience, I'm sure. As a, as a writer, I still want to like, say that they are, um, you, st you stick to what you believe. I, I write things that are a reflection of society. I might exaggerate it a little bit, but I still write what I really want to write. I, I will not write a topic that is given to me. I will write what I feel that is interesting and that I can write and that I can hone my skills better. And having said that, I feel that you still need to do a little bit of marketing. <coughs> Sorry, that's not, my, that's not me. Don't worry. Um, but you still need to do a little bit of marketing. And I, don't, I think marketing has now become a really bad word. I just feel that you need to push yourself a little bit more um, beyond being writing. And I think it really helps you if you kind of publicize it a little bit, and if you kind of talk about it a little bit. And you know, I mean, if, uh, if you have uh, you know, a friend and you say that, you know, have, you, have you seen my play? And that's it. I mean, maybe it's just a word of mouth that works. You know? And uh, instead of you know, doing, like, say, spending lakhs and lakhs of rupees on a marketing of whatever that you need to do, I'd say think of innovative ideas on how to uh, you know, take your one creative product and put it onto many different levels. Because, um, I mean, we are all creative, but you know, creativity without commercialization is actually just nothing. We are at the end of the session. I'm just going to end it. Uh, I think a time has come when the lines are completely dissolved or are on the verge of dissolving between um, scripts, screenplay, books, and cinema. Cinema movies are being made into books. 
and books are turning into movies. And uh, uh, I just saw a literary agent here who has gone away. Otherwise, I would have requested her, Meeta, Meeta Kapoor. Uh, I think that just in the way Vishal Bhardwaj is releasing all the screenplays of his books, of his movies into books, uh, which uh, started the other way around, I feel uh, writers like me who are not able to make movies out of her screenplays, I would like to release it as a book with illustrations so that when I release it as a book and somebody reads it and wants to make a movie, I know for sure that he will not cheat me on copyright because I have the book. So if he makes a movie, he has to give me the money. And if he doesn't make the movie, somebody somewhere will make. And if nobody makes it, no problem. At least it's a book. Uh, in the book signing area, so as soon as the session ends, you can go. Yeah. So, so there's a book signing session later on. Uh, just right now, yeah, yeah. Just a minute, you're just taking a picture.